Okay, so in this video, we're gonna check out the morph page. And the morph page allows you to smoothly go between different snapshots of whatever patch you're working on. So say you want one part to have super reverb with a little bit of a duller tone, while the other part has a brighter tone and a bunch of delay. The morph page allows you to cycle between those two, either using retrigger or just a fluid motion, and it really makes evolved sounds and atmospheres just come to life. Then after that, we're gonna check out the wave page, and this is new to Loom 2, and that's because now we have the ability to import two wave files into the synthesizer itself to use in our additive synthesis process. All right, so this is the morph page inside of Loom 2, and and it's really cool and it definitely is what you want to do if you're gonna be making any sort of movement inside of a patch like an atmosphere an effect or a really nice pad sound and even leads essentially what it does is allow you to store four different snapshots of the patch using these parameters up here so let me just give you an example I've got this hollow preset right here And it's already pretty nice, right? It's a nice pad sound, but we can make it move around a bunch more by using the morph pad. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, there's a couple of different ways to get started inside of the morph pad right here. You can either start double clicking to start making a path, as you can see here, and I can double click again, and really I can get as crazy as I want inside of here. But what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and choose a preset path from the menu, and I'm just gonna choose A, B, C, basic. And that means I'm gonna have a A snapshot, a B snapshot, and a C snapshot. And what we wanna do is just go ahead and save this preset base form as snapshot A. So what I'm gonna do is right click A in store state right there and it's going to light up telling me that there is a state stored for the a section right here and this little ball which is going to be traveling along this line moving the parameters from one state to another is starting on a and then it's going to go to b and then to c so what we're going to want to do is click on b and then do something dramatic so we can get a good idea of what happens inside of the morph pad so i'm going to just go ahead and boost all of these to the right, and then I'm gonna right click B and store state. And if I move this blinking dot right here down, you'll see that the parameters are in fact being moved from the B position to the A position. And if we wanna hear what that sounds like, we have to turn on the auto morph. And right now it's just gonna keep going because the re-trigger isn't on, and I'm just gonna go ahead and say all notes. And now when I play the note, we're gonna get the actual morphing from A to B over the set speed. And if we go ahead and sync, and let's just move it to one bar, and let's go ahead and play the sound now. And all we're gonna be hearing is a transition from A to B because we haven't set a C position yet. So let's go ahead and check that out. So now that we have A and B, let's go ahead and set C. And there's a couple of things you need to know. You need to have the auto morph off to set new parameters. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to set or move any of these parameters up here. And you're also gonna wanna click on the C to make sure you're in the right position, exactly where that ball is. And then just let's move everything to the left this time, just so we can still understand what's happening and we can see the action and hear the action. And let's also turn down the delay mix and the reverb mix, just so the change is a little bit more dramatic. And again, we're gonna right click and store state. So now if we turn on the morph grid again and play the sound. you'll see that we've added a bunch of movement to that already pretty nice pad. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of the type of results you can get using the morph pad quite easily and quite quickly. Movement has never been easier inside of a patch. And don't forget, we don't have to stick right to the corners. We can actually come into the middle here, the middle ground between those three set parameters. We're getting kind of a mix of all three of them. And again, we can go as crazy as we want. There really is no limit to how far we can push this thing. And there are a couple other things I wanna point out real quick. One is the user parameter where you can assign any of the continuous parameters from the edit page to the user knob right here, which you can then apply to the morph grid and also the apply button. This is going to update all of these parameters in the edit page 
as is. So if I make any changes to these parameters, like taking the delay and reverb mix and putting them all the way down and hit apply in the edit window, the delay and reverb mix will be down all the way off as well. So when you hit apply on the morph page, all those changes are made permanent on the edit page. But I guess it's not permanent. All those changes are updated is a better word on the edit page when you use the apply button on the morph page. Anyway, next up, we're gonna check out the wave page. Okay, so last but not least, we're gonna talk about the wave module and the new double wave module. The wave module allows you to import wave files that change the characteristics of all the other modules. So right here, I've got this vocal loaded. This is from one of the presets. So it's obviously got like a vocoder effect, but think about what's possible. This is the biggest, baddest vocoder you've ever seen, right? The possibilities are quite large and almost endless. What pushes things even further into the future is the fact that you can load two waves and using those in conjunction with one another still change all of the sounds from all of the modules that follow it or the ones that came before it. So let me give you a couple of examples from the presets. Here I've got the creepy atmosphere preset loaded and you can see that one of the modules says double wave and nothing is adjustable from here because it says editable on the new wave page. It doesn't say new, but it is new, right? So if we come over here to where the morph and edit pages are, we can select the wave page now. And as you can see, we can have two different waveforms loaded. This is actually the same waveform, but being triggered in different ways. So if we go ahead and listen and place with some of the levels and speeds and starting points, you can hear how these these waveforms are triggering different sounds from different partials from different modules. Let's go ahead and check it out. So as you can see what I'm saying, it is quite unique. And you can imagine if you're gonna be loading the same wave file in there, the different things you can get. Beyond that, you can also load in any wave sample from any of your sample packs to see what they can do to the sound as well. There are also the all new settings for these different wave control panels. These are kind of the global settings, and then you can send them to any one of the envelopes, LFOs, and modulation sources inside of the edit page. I'm really only kind of scratching the surface here. I did just want to share this though, because I think there's a lot of creativity possibilities inside of the wave page. Let's go ahead and check out some of the other presets from the wave selection. So this example is actually using that wave file to trigger the synth itself being used less to modulate the sound and more as a trigger source. So if we go ahead and turn this off, let's see what it sounds like. That's the patch without the wave module enabled, but if we go ahead and enable that wave module that has this kind of broken up rhythmic stabby section inside of it, That's just one other way you can use waveforms inside of Loom 2. Go check it out on Plugin Boutique. I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time. Oh